Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's review of the Interphone RideSync smartphone connection system. Interphone's RideSync device is in essence a monitor that gives you Apple CarPlay or Android Auto on your bike. If you don't know what either of those things are, then CarPlay and Android Auto are apps on your smartphone that connect to this device and let it behave like your phone. Once this is connected to your phone, the relevant apps from your phone will display here and you can open them up on the RideSync device. So mainly that will be navigation and audio apps. The audio apps let you listen to your intercom, but it will also let you make or take calls and send or read messages. So you attach RideSync to your bike and then it's like having your phone on your bike even though your phone's actually in your pocket with the screen locked. Your phone is working in the background, but the RideSync is your interface with your phone. This gives you a simpler display than using your phone itself with bigger icons that are easier to interact with. Not all of your apps on your phone will appear on this, only the apps that are compatible with Android Auto or CarPlay, so there's less clutter to deal with as well. It means you can have a navigation app showing where you're going, you can have caller ID that will pop up if someone calls you, and Spotify could be showing you what's playing through your intercom. And you'll be able to control all of those things through the touchscreen or possibly through voice commands if your intercom's got that function. So why wouldn't we just mount our phone to our bike and use it in the same way as we use this device? There are loads of people who do that and they're perfectly happy. You just buy a mount, a waterproof case for your phone and possibly a way of keeping your phone charged up and then away you go. But that doesn't suit everyone. Understandably, lots of people are worried about damaging their phone by getting it wet or because vibrations from the bike can kill the camera on your phone. There's also the fear of getting it stolen. This unit's waterproof, so there's no risk of water damage and there's no camera on it either, so that can't get damaged either. There's still the risk of theft, but I don't think this will be as attractive to thieves as a phone and at £220 it is considerably cheaper to replace than many modern phones. I've used one of these for around 500 miles on the road and hopefully I can give you an idea of what it is and also what it's like to use. So first of all, you attach a clamp to your bike. There's one supplied with a unit that fixes to the handlebars or any rail on the bike and you get spacers to suit a different range of diameters of bar. You then attach the display to this by matching the recesses of the mount, pushing it and twisting it to secure it in place. This is Interphone's quick lock system. It's tried and tested and one of the benefits of this unit is there are loads of different mounting options for putting it on your bike. So if the mount that's included, this one doesn't suit your bike perfectly, you've got options that are available to you. Once we've done that, the next job is to power up the unit. There are two choices here. Two power cables come supplied with the ride sync. The simplest option is a USB cable. That will take power from any USB-A socket you've got around the handlebars, anywhere on the bike. That's how I mounted this ride sync to a Suzuki V-Strom 800 because that's got a USB outlet next to the clocks. The cable for that is just over a meter long from plug to plug. So if your USB outlet is at the back of the bike, you may struggle to make that cable reach or you might need to extend it in some way. The other option is to wire to the battery. There's a black wire for the negative terminal, yellow for positive, and then a red cable that you attach to a switched live outlet. If you've got an accessory outlet on your bike or a spare fuse outlet, you connect the red wire to that and then the unit will only draw power when the ignition is switched on on your bike. If you can't do that, you have to attach yellow and red wires to your positive terminal on your battery to power up the unit. And that means the ride sync will be taking power from your bike's battery whenever the unit's plugged in. At the unit end, there's a USB socket here to power up the unit and that pushes into a recess which stops water getting into the outlet there. There's no on off switch on this unit, so as soon as it's got power, it turns on and there's no internal battery either. So as soon as it loses power, it just shuts down. If you've got this powered purely from your bike battery terminals, you'll have to turn it off by unplugging here. And if you've got it powered from a USB socket that runs off the ignition, it'll switch off when you turn the ignition off. So now it's on the bike and it's powered up. Once you've followed the relatively simple setup procedure, the display will show you the apps that are available. I've mostly used Waze and Google Maps for riding directions and BBC Sounds or Spotify to listen to radio and podcasts. It's easy to use in that way. It acts as a similar way to a phone. It is a bit slower, which I think is understandable as it's using the phone itself as a relay, but it's really not too bad. You just need to remember that it will take a moment for each press of the screen to register and once you get a handle on that it's fine. On my own phone I find that both Waze and Google Maps are absolutely terrible if you look at them with the phone in landscape mode as they're really designed to be used with the phone upright. The layout through this device is much better in landscape view than it is on a phone and that's important as you can't use the ride sync in portrait mode. The screen brightness and resolution are good and I found the screen is big enough to follow directions easily. 
If your navigation is all about rides from A to B, then Waze is great and Google Maps is okay. But if you want more control over your route, then those both lack sophistication. To get anything like the level of control you can get from a dedicated full feature GPS unit like a TomTom Tom Rider or Garmin Zumo, then you'll need to pay for a subscription app. Free ones like Google and Waze just don't give that level of control. It's for controlling podcasts, calls and music that I find the ride sync more useful. In theory, I can use voice commands on my intercom to control those anyway, but being able to see what's playing or who's calling me does make life easier. I don't usually mount my phone to my bike, so having the ride sync on the bars has made life easier in that regard, as it's much better than fishing my phone out of my pocket to see who's calling me or what music's playing. I also gave this unit to one of my colleagues for him to try, and he's used to having his phone on the bars. He found this unit frustrating as it doesn't have all the functions of a phone. For example, you can see WhatsApp messages that you get while you've got the ride sync on your bike, but you can't see any previous messages in a conversation. So you can reply to messages that you get on WhatsApp while you're riding, but if you want to send a new one, you will have to get your phone out. The simple truth of this is that it's not your phone. If you're used to having that in your view all the time, then this just won't be as good as that. But if you're reluctant to have your phone on the bars and you want the next best thing, then I've found this to be a very good alternative. And if you're the sort of rider who's used to having a dedicated sat nav like a Zumo or a TomTom -tom rider, then this just can't match that level of performance. Sat navs like that can be used as hubs for your phone in a similar way to ride sync. So for outright performance, they're superior, although they are also more expensive. My personal issues with RideSync surround the lack of security for the mount and also the powering options. When stopping for fuel, if it's wired only to the battery terminals on the bike, then I need to unplug it here to power it down. An on-off button on the unit would do away with that need. And it feels just a little bit too easy to nick as you just push the device in and rotate it to release it from its mount. And even the mount itself can be removed without tools. In that regard, a proper sat nav with a power cradle is a considerably better experience. With one of those, you can take it off in a second or so and just stick it in your pocket when you walk in to pay for your fuel. I'm sure it's within the capabilities of Interphone's designers to come up with a way to improve that experience, even if it's a different mount that's a paid for extra for people like me. And I hope they're working on that as we speak. Until then, if you're after something that gives you navigation and control of your phone without putting your actual phone on your bike, then I think RideSync is a decent offering from Interphone. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about Interphone Ride Sync, but if there isn't a thing you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.